everyone, it's Tony with Hidden Light Photography. And we got an awesome question from one of our viewers, Dan. And his question is, what is linear fit? What does it do? And when should you use it? And those are awesome questions and that's exactly what we're gonna talk about today. So if you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button. I don't want you to miss out on any useful information. Dan, those are awesome questions. Now let's go and answer them. To address the questions about linear fit, we're going to be using NGC 6960. And the questions are, what is linear fit? What does it do? And when should you use it? And those are amazing questions. And that's what we're going to answer today. Now, as you can see, NGC 6960 here has a very heavy green cast. And this image was taken with a one-shot color camera. Now keep in mind, even if you image in mono, you can still have a heavy cast in your combined image. And that's where linear fit comes in. Now, you're not always going to have a green cast. That cast can be any color. And it's due to a color imbalance in your image. And that's where linear fit comes in. Now, when we think about the three questions, we can actually answer two of them in one go. And that is, what is linear fit and what does it do? Now, linear fit is a process located in process, all processes, and will come down to linear fit. Now, when you look at the process window, you'll see that you need a reference image. And that reference image is an image of your choice. It's really going to depend on what you're looking for in your image. And we're going to go over that. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to keep our primary image here and I'm going to run linear fit using three different methods, using a reference of lowest, using a reference in the middle, and using a reference of the highest value. Now, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to go into script, HLP, Astro Image Primer. Now, this is my script, and it uses linear fit to um, balance the color channels, the initial correction phase of your image. And we're going to do a little experiment here. So I'm going to choose our primary image here. And first, I'm going to run with the lowest mean. I'm going to hit execute. And what the script is going to do is it's going to split the color channels into uh, their individual channels. And it's going to use, in this case, the lowest mean as the reference channel for linear fit. And then what we're going to do here is exit out of the script. And then we're going to name this lowest. Let's minimize that for a moment. Let's open up the script again. And this time, we're going to go ahead and use the middle mean as the reference. Again, the script is going to split the image into its individual color channels. Only this time, it's going to use the middle mean as the reference. And then once this is done running, we're going to go ahead and close out of the script and name the image middle. So let's go ahead and name this middle. We'll minimize and put off to the side. And we'll do this one more time. And this time we're going to use the highest mean as the reference. So we'll go ahead and execute. And finally, the script is going to separate the image into its individual color channels and use the highest mean as the reference image. And once this is done running, we'll close out of the script and name our image highest. So let's exit out of the script and name this one highest. So let's go ahead and do a quick stretch on all three of these. 
And as we can see here, the heavy color cast is now gone on all three of these images. So what happened? Let's go ahead and examine this. Let's minimize all three of our images here and also minimize our main image. Let's go into process, all processes, and let's go down to statistics. Let's go ahead and choose our main image, the image that we started with. And we're using 16 bit, and we're gonna look at the mean values. As we can see here, blue had a mean value of 64.434. Green had a mean value of 110.984. And red had a mean value of 66.576. So these are essentially the brightness values of our pixels. This is the average brightness value of our pixels. Now, when we run linear fit, we're choosing a reference frame, a reference image, and it can be your highest mean, your middle mean, or your lowest mean. And that's exactly what we did on these. This was done with a reference of the lowest mean, a reference of the middle mean, and a reference of the highest mean. So what linear fit does, linear fit will take your primary image and it will equal out, normalize, if you will, the three color channels to match the value of your chosen reference. So let's examine this. If we take our lowest mean here, which was blue, which had a value of 64.434, and we come down and we look at lowest, all of a sudden we see that all three channels have essentially or close to a matching mean value. Similarly, if we go and we choose our middle uh, image, this one had a value of 66.576, and we examine middle, we see that our uh, three channels have close to the same value as our middle channel. And then the same if we look at the highest mean, which was green at 110.984, we examine highest, all of our channels were made to match the highest. And that's what linear fit does. So if we take a deeper look into this or a different look, we go to process all processes and we come down to generalized hyperbolic stretch. Let's open up our original image really quick, and we see here that our channels are pretty separated. Now we know that our blue channel and our red channel had a similar value. In fact, let me bring up statistics again, and let's go to our original image here, and we can see that the mean value of red was 66.576, and the mean value of blue was 64.434. And we can see that right here in the histogram curve or the histogram peaks. Our red and blue are pretty close to each other. But green is way up there at 110.984 and we can see green separated pretty far at a higher value. Now, let's go to lowest. What we see here is that the histogram peaks are pretty much in line. They're balanced. And when we take a look in statistics, if we go to lowest, we can see that balance in numerical format versus uh, histogram format. Let's go into middle. And we can see once again, if we 
look at middle in um, statistics, we're matched up with the middle. And there's not that much movement in the histogram peak because they are so close to each other. Here we have on middle 66.576, 65.369, and 64.734. And with lowest 63.824, 64.216, and 64.434. They're pretty close to each other. If we go to highest, now we're at 110.026, 110.984, and 110.521. And we can see that in the histogram peak. And knowing this information, which way do you think this curve is gonna go, right or left? Now remember, moving right means brighter, moving left means darker. So if we go to the highest, we see that our curve moves to the right. Again, our color channels are still aligned with each other. They're still with each other and balanced. And that is due to linear fit, um, balancing the values of each color channel. So that's what linear fit is and what linear fit does. Now, when do we use linear fit? That is really up to you. Personally, I like to use linear fit right out the gate. The first thing that I do is linear fit. And the reason is, is I don't like looking at this cast here. I want to get actual real potential of my data. I want to see what my data is actually capable of. Now, yes, you can essentially do the same thing. If we were to take, let's um, hop into uh, screen transfer function here, we could technically do an unlinked stretch on this and get pretty much the same result. The problem is, is our color channels are still imbalanced. This right here, using an unlinked stretch with screen transfer function, it's a, it's a synthetic effect. It's not real. And I want to work with my balanced color channels. So doing a linked stretch, the only way to get the uh, green cast gone is to do a process like linear fit. Now, when you're using WBPP, you can actually have it separate out your color channels and um, work with them individually right out the gate. You can have it combine your color channels if you're using one shot color, um, in which case you're gonna wanna separate your color channels out and do linear fit, or you can use my script here, Astro Image Primer, and you can throw in your combined image. It'll automatically separate, and you can choose to leave the channel separated or have it combine them. I have a whole video going over this script, so I don't want to cause any confusion. Um, but realistically, I like to do linear fit as the absolute first thing that I do to an image. So I have my color channels balanced. I'm using a linked stretch, so everything is real. It's the real potential of your image. And using middle, lowest, highest as far as reference, um, if I have a lot of dim areas in an image, I'll tend to lean more towards the um, highest mean as a reference. If I have a lot of bright areas that I wanna keep tame, I'll tend to lean more towards the lowest. When, when it comes to that, it, it's really up to you. Um, it's gonna be learning your data, how it reacts. Experiment with it, play with it. That's what this is all about is finding your groove and doing what you need to do and what you want to do with your data. Again, your vision, your creation. Now, um, linear fit is a very good tool. Um, I'll do it with galaxies. I'll do it with, um, with nebula. But uh, another question that kind of pops up is, do I work with my color channel separated or do I work with them combined? In other words, 
after I run linear fit, should I leave the channel separated and process from there? Or should I run linear fit and recombine? And again, um, that is completely up to you. Generally speaking, if I'm working with a nebula, like you see here, NGC 6960, I'll work my color channels individually and then um, I'll combine them again after stretching them. If I'm working with a galaxy, I will go ahead and combine them after linear fit and then process as normal, just with a combined image versus individual. And the reason is, is just the colors, right? Usually when we're imaging nebula, we're imaging them in narrow band or false color palettes. And a lot of times, a lot of these nebula, uh, we'll take IC1805, um, you know, we'll take uh, uh, Pelican and, and things like that. They, they tend to have a more red uh, natural color. Uh, it doesn't matter if you do this with those images, when you run SPCC, they'll turn out red because SPCC is designed to bring it into a more natural form. Whereas galaxies, you're imaging those in broadband, you're in more natural uh, wavelengths. So processing them with in, uh, separated channels, you tend to get more away from that. Again, it's your vision, your creation. So do it how you want to do it and it's okay but just to kind of answer uh, what linear fit is what it does when to use it i hope that this uh kind of sheds some light on that and uh again you know you'll see a lot of people using linear fit in uh, different um, points within their workflow i like to just do it right away Balance the color channels right away, get rid of this green cast so I can be on a linked stretch, which is a real stretch, uh, auto stretch, I should say, and I'm working with uh, the actual potential of my data. So I hope you found this video useful, and if you did and want to help support the channel, check out that join button and consider joining a Hidden Light Photography membership. There's lots of perks in it for you, and your support helps me bring you more content. Another way you can help support the channel is using my link to High Point Scientific if you happen to be in the market for some new gear. Also, that channel icon that popped up? Hit that channel icon and subscribe. I don't want you to miss out on any future content. Drop a comment in the comment section. At what point in your workflow do you use linear fit? Which reference mean value do you tend to lean toward? And then, check out that next video. Until the next time, clear skies.